if you are not confident with rhythm, you will reach a plateau that you will not be able to overcome. Lack of attention to rhythm is one of the number one things that holds piano players back from playing fluidly and with freedom. Rhythm is not just about being able to see note values on a page and interpret them correctly. Yes, that is part of it, but it actually has a lot more to do with how your brain organizes complex information. There are so many side effects of bad rhythm. Three of the biggest ones are that your playing will lack accuracy overall. Your practice won't stick, meaning you'll sit down at the piano and put in a bunch of hard work and then the next day you won't remember any of it and you'll feel like you're starting from zero. And if you don't pay attention to rhythm, your playing will always lack that flow and expressive element. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to cover five points about rhythm. And in these points, I'm going to show you how you can use this book, Rhythmic Training by Robert Starr, to increase your rhythm skills significantly and easily so that you don't reach that plateau that I was talking about. The things that I'm going to suggest will not add a bunch of time to your practice routine, but the benefits are huge. So the first point is that you can acquire the skill set of good rhythm. In the preface to the book Rhythmic Training by Robert Starr, he even says, the ability to transform visual symbols of rhythmic notation into time dividing sounds is an acquired skill. It involves the coordination of physical, psychological, and musical factors and cannot be accomplished simply by the act of comprehension. And I love this quote so much because it really hones in on one of the biggest mistakes that I see piano players make when it comes to rhythm. And that is that they just think that rhythm is something that is meant to be comprehended in the moment. But it's too complicated, especially when you get to more advanced pieces. And until you reach a very, very, very high level of piano playing, you won't be able to simply comprehend the rhythm as it comes up or as you are seeing it. You're going to have to practice rhythm as its own separate skill set that you can acquire in order to be able to get to that point that you can see rhythmic patterns and comprehend them on first sight. The second point that I want you to understand so that you don't reach that rhythm plateau is that you should be practicing rhythm alone, all by itself. And it doesn't take a lot of time. If you were to use the rhythmic training book by Robert Starr and spend about five minutes in each practice session going over one example or even just part of one example, the consistency of doing that in every single practice session will ensure that your rhythm skills will be leveled up five minutes a day. Pick one small thing that you can have success with in those five minutes and just make that the goal. And oftentimes that's a lot smaller than you think it's going to be. For example, a lot of adults will try to tackle an entire exercise in this book, but I would suggest maybe just doing one line of an exercise and doing it many times in a row accurately. That's going to get you faster results than trying to do an entire exercise with lots of mistakes only one time through. The third point I want you to know is that it's very important to start at the very beginning. 99.9% .9 of piano players skip over the concept of rhythm completely. And they often find themselves playing really advanced pieces where the rhythm is really complex. But if you've never spent time practicing your rhythm skill set on its own, then your rhythm comprehension is going to be lower than perhaps your note comprehension or your musicality comprehension. And because of that, you will often need to go back to those beginning stages with rhythm. And that doesn't mean that you're going to like a remedial rhythm class or anything like that. It means that you're giving yourself the chance to level up that skill set faster to catch up to your other skill sets. I always like to make the point that when you get this book and you get started with it, go to the very beginning, pretend like you're a total beginner and start at that first page. The worst thing that is going to happen is that you have a lot of success with that first example. And maybe you even are able to do it several times in a row without mistakes. That's not a bad thing. It's gonna feel easy. You're gonna feel like you're really awesome at rhythm and it's going to give you that confidence to come back the next day and go on to the next exercise. But starting at the beginning, regardless of the level at which you're playing, is going to ensure that you don't have holes in your rhythm skills because you're going to be building from the ground up, making sure to fill in all of those holes. Now, if you're liking this video and you're finding some of this helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share this video with some other piano players so that they can level up their rhythm as well. The fourth point is that I want you to memorize the most common rhythmic patterns and this book breaks them all down for you. For example, if you look at page 41, which is the beginning of one of the chapters, Robert Starr actually puts the most common rhythm patterns that you're going to see 
with triplets, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes, because that's the entire focus of the chapter. So before you even dive in and start to try to clap and count out loud actual musical examples, you're going to just get familiar with the rhythmic patterns that you're going to be seeing in the examples. This is hugely helpful because music is all about patterns, and the more that you memorize and familiarize yourself with those patterns, the easier it is for you to see things on a page and comprehend it quickly. So as an example of how you would practice these patterns, using page 41, you would just start with one measure and you would turn on the metronome and you would practice clapping and counting out loud until you got comfortable and confident doing one measure many times in a row accurately. And once you achieved that, you could go on to the second measure and you would focus just on the second measure and do that exact same thing. So let's do that. Looking at the first measure, we've got triplets and eighth notes. We're in two, four time. And so I'm going to turn my metronome on to a slow ish speed about 60 to make sure that I can have the time to comprehend, but also to actually clap and count accurately. I'm going to listen before I get started. And then I'm going to clap and count this exercise out loud. And I'm just going to do it on repeat so that I have the chance to really hear what I'm doing, feel the pulse and get the counting right. One lolly, two, and one lolly, two, and one lolly, two, and. Now, why is it important to just practice these rhythm patterns on their own? Let's look at the first example in this chapter where you can see I just have tons of measures of variations on this pattern. And so if I focus on just learning the pattern and mastering the pattern, it's going to serve me so well when I go to actually practice those examples. The fifth point that I want you to understand to level up your rhythm skills is that you can use this book in addition to anything that you're doing. It doesn't matter what pieces you're learning, what method books you're in, if you're practicing Cherney or Hannon or Scales or Technique, you can simply add three to five minutes of rhythm practice into your existing routine with this book. The ways that you can practice from this book are endless. I've had students start at the very beginning of the book and go all the way through beginning to end, simply counting out loud and clapping the rhythm patterns, making their goal and focus on that first time through the book accuracy. And once they achieve this, we actually start over again. And then we make the goal speed to not only have that accuracy and be able to understand the rhythm, but then be able to bring that speed and fluidity. And if you use this book consistently in your routine, you're going to start to notice improvements everywhere in your playing within about two weeks. Now I'll link the book in the description below and if you want a little bit more information on how to go about practicing rhythm correctly so that it can be as effective and efficient as possible, check out this live stream where I dove deep into the benefits of rhythm, how to practice it, and how to make sure that you don't make the common mistakes when you're practicing rhythm so that you can actually make that progress. You can check that video out right here.